The weather couldn't be better. We have a brilliant sun at this moment, and here comes the president now. In fact, he's not in his limousine. He's departed the limousine, and he is walking. He is reaching across the fence, shaking hands, shaking hands with many of the people who have come here to see him. He is closely accompanied by Dallas police officers and, of course, the Secret Service. He is now shaking hands, and they are walking along the line of the fence, shaking hands with some of the hundreds of people who have come here to view their arrival. And now, the President and First Lady are retreating from the fence. They're heading now for the official limousine where Governor Connolly stands, waiting their arrival so that they can make their way downtown and out to the trademark. But this was one of those impromptu moments for which President Kennedy is so well known. So many times you have heard that the Secret Service men suddenly find themselves without the president, that suddenly he has left them and stepped into the crowd, the milling throng, and decided to shake hands and give his personal greetings. And this, once again, he did. There's the gunmetal gray limousine, blue and gray, pulling away now from the fenced area. The president and Mrs. Kennedy seated on the back seat Governor and Mrs. Connolly on the second seats or jump seats, and then the official driver and Secret Service men are in the front seat. A flying wedge of some one dozen Dallas police motorcycles leading the way, and the pace is picking up as they head for the departure gate and the trip downtown to the trademark. Now, those of you who are waiting along the parade route uh, just to be sure that you find yourself in the proper location, let's give it to you once again. It will go Mockingbird Lane to Lemon Avenue, then travel south on Lemon to Turtle Creek, Cedar Springs, through the downtown area on Harwood to Maine, west on Maine to Houston, through the Triple Underpass to Stemmons Freeway, then on to the Trademark. After greeting the friendly crowds at Love Field, the president took his seat in the rear of the Lincoln limousine next to his wife, Jackie, and right behind Governor Conley, who was in a jump seat. The motorcade rode through Dallas, heading for the downtown area. The crowds grew thicker and were very friendly, as many as 12 to 15 deep. presidential limousine is turning right from Harwood Street onto Main Street and will head west for about three quarters of a mile toward Dealey Plaza. Houston Street heading for the corner of Elm Street and the crowds are just beginning to thin out.
president's car is now turning onto Elm Street, and it will be only a matter of minutes before he arrives at the trademark. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trademark. Something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. Stand by.
We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. I'm in behind the motorcade trying to follow them. It looks as though they're going to Parkland Hospital. We're on the road to Parkland at this time. The Secret Service man is still spread eagle over whoever is in the car, the President and Mrs. Kennedy, and as we understand, Governor and Mrs. Connolly. At this point, it looks as though it could have been one or two or even all of the people within the car may have been the victims, may have been struck by shots. We don't know. Parkland Hospital in the distance. Now on Harry Hines Boulevard, following behind the motorcade. They're approaching the entrance now to Parkland Hospital, traveling at a high rate of speed. I'm pulling in now toward Parkland Hospital, coming to the approach. An officer waving me down. He's waving me around. There's a cordon. There's already a cordon of police officers running from their cars, from their vehicles here. The official party, as I can see it, pulling around toward the emergency room. The President of the United States is dead. I have just talked to Father Oscar Hubert of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church. He and another priest tell me that the pair of men have just administered the last rites of the Catholic Church to President Kennedy. I asked the father, is Mr. Kennedy dead? And his quote, he's dead all right. And just a few seconds ago, I talked to Thurman Ward, the Justice of the Peace of Garland. He's now here at the hospital to apparently officially declare that the Chief Executive of the United States has expired. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now, the President is dead. Women here in shock, some have fainted. Grown men, Secret Service men standing by the emergency room, tears streaming down their face. There's only one word to describe the picture here, and that's grief, and much of it. It's official, as of just a few moments ago, the President of the United States is dead. John F. Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. He died of a gunshot wound in the brain. Dr. Berkeley told me it's a, a simple matter, Tom, of, uh, of a bullet right through the head. Just a few minutes ago, the President of the United States turned from Houston Street onto Elm Street on his way to a scheduled luncheon.